Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord of our lives and God of our salvation, we praise you that we are your creation. By your grace, we have been brought to this time. Show us the ways in which we may follow you. Forgive the sin in us and strengthen us for service. We pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord
will clothe him with a robe, and will give authority into his hand. I will place upon him the key of the house of David. He shall open, and no one can shut. He shall shut, and no one can open. He will become a throne of honor. This is the word of the Lord.
changing, upright and holy. O oh Lord, you have been good and you have been faithful to all, to all generations. As I was putting together a message, I did a little man. This evening as I stand here, I once sat there. And I started counting up how long that's been. I celebrated 69 years, one month, and 25 days of life. And when I want to add it all up, that means I've lived for 25,241 days. And all of those days are spent days. I don't relive them. I don't get a do-over. I don't get a second chance. Among them are memorable days and not so memorable. About a thousand of those days was spent right here in this building. Hundreds and hundreds of hours right here on this basketball court, classroom areas. Spent in the gym, spent out on the athletic field, spent with classmates like you have classmates. Out of my 25,000 plus days, there were days that brought me great pleasure and certainly days that brought me a whole lot of pain. Good days and bad days, and I want to tell you, lots of just another day days. Forgettable days. Misspent with no hope of do over other than the fact that I have a promise of God, just like you do today. As graduates, the promise of God is this. Wait a minute. The best is yet to come. That Bible truth is not just for teens who are dressed up as pretty looking guys. That truth is also for faculty. And that truth is for parents and grandparents and relatives and friends. God is a God who opens up doors. He's a door-opening God, always has been and always will be. And He's going to open up some wonderful, spectacular doors for you as graduates. The best is yet to come. It knows no boundaries. It knows no age or race or gender. They are words of promise. They are words of promise spoken through Scripture and given to some mighty ordinary people. Reverend Clement Thies was one such ordinary person. He was my religion teacher in this school back in 1958. And one day he said something to me. One day he gave me a door opening challenge. As I was leaving his classroom, he said, Come here, Warren, I want to talk with you for a moment. And his words to me went like this. He said to me, Warren, have you ever thought about God opening up a door for you to serve him in ministry? I tried to be a clement police to love young people in my church. Could you imagine that God could use you in great, fantastic ways in ministry? That could be in a workplace, that can be in a church, that can be on a foreign mission field. Now, your life verse may not be mine, Ephesians chapter 3. But can you believe that God stands ready right now for you young people to open up doors for you that you can't even begin to imagine? When you walk through those doors tonight, do you believe that His power and His presence within you enables you to honor God? And to bless people. When Luther Institute opened its doors a hundred years ago, they could not begin to imagine, let alone ask for the immeasurably more that God has poured and has provided. Because of their faith in a door opening, God, Luther North was first birthed in 1953. And I'm among, and you're among the 15,000 graduates from North and Luther Living out the words of God that His presence will always be with us. It's in the great Psalm, Psalm 90, the oldest in the Bible, that Moses is looking back at his life and he's got a prayer. And he says the following Psalm 90, Lord, you're the one. Lord, you're the one that's been our dwelling place throughout all generations. He goes out and he prays, he says, We, but we just come and we go. The length of our days may be 70 or 80, if we have the strength. He goes on and he prays, Lord, please teach us the number of our days. Teach us to make the most of our time in life so that we may grow in wisdom. I put it this way. 
Lord, help us count our days. But at the same time, help make our days count. <coughs> Moses prayed in that prayer in the 17th verses of May. The Lord our God show us his approval and make our efforts successful. He repeats, he said, yes, make our efforts successful. That is the prayer of his faculty for you as students. That is the prayer of your parents and friends for you as students. Make their efforts successful. Now years ago, what I did is I personalized that in my Bible. I wrote down my own words, and my prayer was this as I wrote it up. Lord, may my work be effective and enduring even though I am like grass that dries and withers. A few graduates to this great faculty, to you as family and friends, he, he is the success for life. He is the one who opens up doors for us every single day to the imaginable more that He wants to pour in our life and through our life to bless others. He is the one, no matter if you're 18 or you're 80, who says the best is yet to come. He is the one who has sent this faculty to not only share with you facts that are going to benefit you vocationally, but also faith that's going to bless you spiritually. He is the same one whose presence was here 51 years ago when I graduated from this school. He is the same one who's opening up doors, who opened up the doors of Luther Institute and Luther North, who opens up the doors of salvation from a cross and an empty tomb. He is the same one who gives the same promise to you as I received when I graduated. God says to you today, I be with you always. How true the words of one of our great hymns of the church. Our God, our help, in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast. He's our eternal home. Precious Father, I thank you. I thank you for this place of learning, this place of sharing faith and doing life. I thank you for each young person here. Please, Father, we beg you based upon the promises of your word that you would do the immeasurably more in them and through them to honor you and give a gift of love and hope to another human being. I thank you for the education which they've received, and I pray that they'll use it wisely. Give to them success in your eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the parents who sacrificed and who gave up their time. We thank you for those who support this school. And we lift this up before you in the precious name of Him, who is the giver of every good and perfect gift. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Please join in singing the school song, O God of Youth. Paul Siegel, 
director of the National Ocular Institute in Washington, D.C. Dr. Don Kempke, uh, professor emeritus now and former chair of the physics department at Bob Hayes University, class of uh, 1954. Nick DiGiulio, class of 1983, WGM Radio and broadcast personality and film director here in Chicago. In 2008, Matt Bass Van class of 72, a nine-time Emmy Award winner and seven-time Golden Globe Award winner for sound production in Hollywood, uh, television, and films. Today's people are no different. We have two, for the first time, co-winners of that award. As you have heard, the alums chosen before have a wide spectrum of service in society and a wide area of different uh, areas of endeavor. This year's cohort recipients, we feel, are perfect examples in this hundredth year of our mission state. They serve and they serve. They themselves have attended Lutheran schools and their formal education throughout their educational career and served the Lutheran Church and mission field for the last 40 some years. I've had the distinct pleasure of having known uh, these alumni of Lutheran North for over 45 years and that Elise was a classmate of mine when we began with the force together and Wayne is a cousin of my wife, uh, Sharon, and who I also know we started the day with in college. Upon graduation from the seminary, Wayne took the call as a missionary to begin. Mom with a consistently growing family spent five years. Upon return of sabbatical uh, to the United States, the few three or four kids, I can't remember which, out of the present five, uh, Wayne assumed a mission call to an outpost about 40 miles outside of Detroit that had less than, less than a couple hundred baptized members where they have served since 1972. That congregation, Faith in Detroit, Michigan, is now if not the largest, one of the largest in the, in the entire denomination that uh, sponsors us through the Christian Center. And it's consistently a model for different kinds of ministries and for various roles throughout our denomination service. Elise has made a, as you saw, the program in the back is another writer, uh, children's books and, and uh, women's, Christian women's books. Uh, has gained quite a bit of uh, a little time before that. At this time, it's my privilege, my distinct privilege, to be able to award both Elise and Warren our class of 1961 and 1958, respectively, and co-winners of the Alumni of the Year Award this centennial, centennial year of Luther High School Hall. Thank you. 
for me to be a missionary and to marry a minister someday. It was 12 years later, I was at Concordia University in River Forest, Illinois, and I had seen this young man at this high school running up and down the basketball court, but I was a freshman, he was a senior. Not too much interest there, but I grew up. Went to Concordia, he was a senior, I was a freshman, he, his eye caught my eye, and I looked at him, and he looked at me, and he asked me out on our first date. And that night, as we talked about our dreams and our hopes for the future, God opened the door for me. And not only the door just for me, but for my husband. And uh, for the young man that I was uh, looking at at that day, as he said these words, he said, you know, I'm going to graduate, and I'm going to become a teacher. But I have this call in my life to go into the pastoral ministry with the intent of going into the foreign mission field. Now, girls down there, do you think this guy had a chance? A little girl in the city of Chicago was praying at age six to marry, to become a missionary, and to marry a pastor. We were married one uh, year and a half later. He finished one year of teaching, and then he received a call from our Lord to go into the full-time pastoral ministry. Enrolled in Concordia Seminary in Springfield, Illinois. We drove down there. We were in love with each other, in love with Jesus, and we were out to change our world for him. It was four years later, two children, a third baby on the way, and we served to receive our very first call to the territory of Papua New Guinea. Some of you don't, might not know where New Guinea is located. It's right above Australia. It is one of the most primitive, still one of the most primitive countries in the world. When our daughter Elizabeth, we arrived at the territory of Papua New Guinea, our daughter Elizabeth was born. We had two small boys, and uh, they sent us on to our very first mission station, which was in the Pogro, right in the the center of the island of Papua New Guinea. They were a Stone Age culture. We had arrived there six years after the first missionaries had gone into that area and what had been declared safe for missionaries to come in. They were Stone Age people. Their greatest technological advancement was the steel axe on one side of the bush knife on the other side because they had just come out of the Stone Age culture. They did not wear clothes like we wore. The men wore human hair wigs, painted faces, arrows in one hand, a spear in the dark, and a bow in the other hand. The women wore grass skirts. And these were the people that God called us to serve. I look back in the rearview mirror of my life and I see that. And I see the grace of our Lord, the amazing grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, as He guided our lives, brought us together to serve Him. After five years, our term was up. We were evangelistic missionaries there. And that was an exciting time in our lives. But then we were called back to the United States. And one of the closed doors that we experienced was the closed door of not being able after our furlough because of illness. And our hearts were broken because that's what happens with disappointment. And you're going to be experiencing disappointment in your life. You're going to have doors that are going to close. But remember, I think after that, that verse that God works together for good in those who love him and are called according to his purposes. We were being back to, to the United States. Some of you were actually by this time we had four children. And um, we come to this little congregation and I'll never forget my husband saying, we were praying about where we were supposed to go. And I remember Warren and me praying together and saying, Lord, send us anywhere but Detroit. <laughs> Don't ever say that. Don't ever give God that challenge because he'll take you up on, you know, what exactly the opposite of what you say sometimes. We ended up in Detroit, Michigan, in Troy, Michigan, right outside of Detroit. A little congregation that began to grow and flourish under the power of the Holy and the direction of the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, we see this congregation growing, and not only that, but Doors are starting to open, and we thought we had left the mission field only to find that the mission field was right in our backyard. We live in a, in a uh, community that is one of the most diverse ethnic communities in the state of Michigan and has the highest degree of Arabic uh, people uh, next to Dearborn, Michigan, outside of the Middle East. In our backyard, our Muslims, our Hindus, our Sikhs, our um, uh, people of all different cultures. And on our church, in our church right now, and we are so excited because we have seen this door open because our hearts were always for that work that God had called us to be missionaries. We thought we left the mission field only to find out that that mission field was there. And right now on our, on our premises at our church, we have a Christian church that worships in Urdu, with Punjabi and Hindi, a North Indian Pakistani group. We also have a church that meets, a Christian church that meets
service that speaks in the Tamil language and has their services in the Tamil language and also an Arabic Christian community is beginning to rise up in our particular area. And we are so thankful to God. As you leave from this place, those of you who are graduates, don't ever underestimate what God can do with an ordinary person because we serve an extraordinary God. And when he opens those doors, if you look back in the rear view mirror when you get older, you rejoice and you thank God for those things. But also, when you, those disappointments come and those doors are closed, understand that he is working something for good in your life. As you trust him and as you love him. Congratulations, class of 2009. Thank you. 
Brandon Thompson Jacob. Stephen Cole. Christopher Daniel Swinar. Gannon has received the Loyola Trustee Scholarship in the amount of 
John Grundy has received an $8,000 academic scholarship and a $5,000 merit scholarship from Northwood College. Hannah Helwig has received a $5,000 academic scholarship from St. Paul College. Christopher Commons has received the Camera Scholarship from the Illinois Institute of Technology. This is a four-year full tuition scholarship. Timothy <laughs> Little has received a $2,500 Dean Scholarship from Dominican University. Kyla Lutz has received $12,500 in a scholarship from North Central College. Rohini Bortha has received Paul's Dean's Scholarship Award in the amount of $34,000. El Popova has received an 11,500 Regents Scholarship from Concordia University. Julia Sullivan has received the St. Ignatius Award in the amount of $1,400 from Marquette University. And Kyle Walkabouts has received the Presidential and the Junior Achievement Scholarships from Valparaiso University, totaling $13,500 per year. Congratulations.
been in the business of Lutheran education for a long time. And it all started even before he became a Lutheran educator. Dr. Davy has been a winner since his baptism, since he was adopted by Jesus Christ. And he has returned that, that wonderful act of love and mercy from our Lord and Savior by serving as an educator in Lutheran schools for more than 40 years. And my prayer as I look at the faculty is that many of you will spend that many years educating such fine young people like you have in the graduating class of Lutheran North in 2009. Before I honor Dr. David, I'd like to take an opportunity to also honor the faculty because no principal, no director, no one who leads in education can be a good leader unless he has good followers. And those followers here at Luther North are good teachers. Please recognize them and thank God. Why is this important to you now? I mean, as 
you can't wait to get out of here and get out of the graduation party. Because the school teaches you to assume responsibility for challenging the get. You guys saw the Christian atmosphere that every day you heard the gospel preach somewhere in the hall, somewhere in the classroom, somewhere around the world. As well as to be productive in service to your fellow man. You've been equipped to do anything you set your mind to do. You've heard that before. Is tomorrow and you stay one for the rest of your life. You've heard a phrase from the old Star Tech program, Live Long and Prosper, often said by Mr. Spock, the science officer. I will only add one thing wherever you go and whatever you do, remember where you're from and who you're from. To this crowd, as you've already done the students. And as they act and play, Dr. Spock, what is fond of saying, the miracle of giving of yourself is this, the more you share, the more you have. Best luck, and God bless you all, and thank you very much. One more thing, Dr. Daly. On behalf of the Oakland uh, North School Association, we have one more little token of our appreciation for your many years of service, and we wish you Godspeed and thank you. Thank you. 